aren't you glad you're in church this morning? It's a little different, and uh, some of us are still visiting just a little bit, and uh, we'll be making our ways to our respective positions, and uh, we just want you to be here. We want this to be a great day of worship, and uh, you just lift up the Lord and magnify Him and praise Him. We were just uh, just talking. We'll be glad when we're back inside. And uh, in two weeks, that's uh, not next Sunday, but the next Sunday, that's the 14th, uh, we're going to have it so you can worship whatever way you're comfortable. We want everybody to be comfortable in what they're doing. Uh, we're going to have worship on the inside. We're going to have to do the, the distancing and all that stuff. And we can do that. We'll cooperate that way. We're going to have drive-in worship where you can pull in listen to the worship service on your radio station just like you are today and join in the worship we're going to have it on facebook where you can watch it on facebook we're going to have it on uh, uh, youtube so you can watch it on youtube and uh, if somebody pray for, pray for the radio program we'd put it on a radio program <laughs> so uh, we're just going to have it every way you can no excuse for not worshiping on sunday Amen. And then, uh, then we got some great things coming up. That's going to get us back in time just to have Father's Day to honor them on the 21st. And then uh, District Fifth and Sixth graders is going to have a, a day in Pena, as far as I know. That hasn't been canceled. Youth camps have been canceled, but it hasn't. And then layman's retreats coming, pastors and wives retreats coming, and all those things are coming. And uh, we're looking at them, looking to them with anticipation but this morning we just want to praise the lord and lift him up do you know what today is pentecost sunday it's pentecost sunday this is when we celebrate the birth of the church of the holy spirit coming and descending on us and uh, this morning we want to lift him up and praise him so uh, the praise team is going to come and lead us in a song and then uh, Pastor Rick is going to come and pray for us. Isn't it good to have him back with us this morning? Yeah. And we'll see him moving around. Yeah, there you go. And uh, so let's just uh, let's just join in the worship together, shall we?
Lord Jesus, it's so good to talk to you again. We do many times, maybe by ourselves, but today we're here corporately praying and asking your blessings upon all the efforts that's gone into getting this ready so many people can hear. We're anxious to come back and worship as we always have, and that's coming, and we're grateful for that. We're thankful for that. And Lord, as the 14th comes, we anticipate a wonderful service. Even though there's restrictions, we will worship and be in our own church. And we thank you for it. So Lord, today is a beautiful day you've given us. It's just perfect. And we thank you for that as we worship out here in the open. And Lord, but that does not hinder your blessing. That does not hinder your spirit. Your spirit is with us each one today. And we feel your spirit. And we're going to continue as we sing more of the songs. And pastor comes and preaches to us. We ask you to anoint him. Anoint him on high. Anoint him for his sermon and his message. Give him strength. Give him voice. Give him a special touch today. We thank you. And then, Lord, we cannot remember those who are sick and confined and, and unable to be with us today for whatever reason that may be. So, Lord, go where we can't go right now, but you can go. You can be there. You Amen. can go to the bedsides, the hospitals, the, the homes, uh, wherever it is, uh, to uh, uh, children, adults, and older people. And it's good to see some of our people here. It's good to see George and Rita. You yeah. touch them yeah. and bring healing to them and a divine touch. And Lord, there's others that may slip my mind, but you know who they are. So would you bless us all today in the name of Jesus, our wonderful Lord, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. 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 She does such an excellent job, and we're glad she's here this morning to read to us. Thank 
can you yeah, hear me? Yeah, yeah. Um, good morning. I am reading um, the chapter 2 in Acts. Uh, the first part is the Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost. When the day when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were, now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, What does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, They have had too much wine. Then we go to Peter and addresses the crowd. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will see will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge. And you, with the help of the wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. David said about him, I saw the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest in hope. Because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, you will not let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Fellow Israelites, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried, and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on the throne. Seeing what was to come, he spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, that he was not abandoned to the realm of the dead, nor did his body see decay. God raised Jesus, this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of it. Exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out what you now see and hear. For David did not ascend to heaven, and yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children, and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words he warned them, and he pleaded with them, Save yourself from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted this message were baptized, and about 300 were added to their number that day. The Fellowship of the Believers. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and, teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. 
Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give anyone to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Amen. Amen. great God. How great is our God. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be honored. And that's what we want to do this morning. We want to honor him.
we've all heard it, so we're going to sing it for ourselves today, and that's Waymaker. Let's give it a try, okay?
one thing about going live, you never know what's going to happen. And uh, you don't have any retakes or do-overs. You just go with it. And uh, the Lord's here. He's going to help us. And he's going to bless us today. And we're going to we're going to have a, a great time together. I, uh, when I think about uh, Pentecost, uh, uh, I wonder sometimes if we really realize what, uh, what happened there. There was something that began a new era of the world, a new power of righteousness, a new mission of redemption, a new basis of, of fellowship. What was it that made Pentecost the birthday of the Church of Christ? It's not enough to say the Holy Spirit was given. In what sense was was it given? We gotta we gotta stop and think. We gotta remember that way back there in creation, the Holy Spirit was there. The Bible says that he 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 hovered over the earth. He uh, it says it he brooded over the earth, meaning he covered over the earth and if you go back and read the read the scriptures and read the, read about uh, the Holy Spirit uh, you'll find that uh, uh, it always meant uh, he always meant life he always meant there was uh, something happening when when the Holy Spirit was around I think about that preparation that day for the Holy Spirit I think about how uh, how the ladies, when they went back from the tomb after the resurrection, how how uh, the the Spirit had told them to uh, to gather together and and the, the disciples to come and and how they had done that for uh, uh, oh for what forty days they had been praying and waiting and fasting and expecting God to come in a in an unusual way and there in that upper room that day. 120 people in prayer uh, and God came on the scene. It's kind of like uh, our church when we get started back there on the 14th. Uh, God's going to come on the scene. We're, we're going to have a we're going to have a hoot and holler time. God's going to bless us and people's going to rejoice and uh, uh, there's going to be some people get saved I believe because we've been faithful and we've done what God wants us to do. But when I think about uh, when I think about there on the day of Pentecost, when I think about uh, uh, the Spirit of God, how it's been active in the world from uh, from the beginning, before before Pentecost, what happened? Uh, the Old Testament uh, in the Old Testament, uh, the Holy Spirit is a is a creative agent. He's a he's a sustainer. He's a renewer of the of the world of nature. He's the he's the Lord and giver of life. And in Ezekiel's vision, remember, Ezekiel had a vision back there in in chapter one and and verse fifteen. And if you remember it, uh, it dealt with the, the forces and machinery of nature and how they were impelled and controlled by the by the spirit of God and that dwelled in the in the wheels that were there Ezekiel was both a, a priest and a prophet during some of the most difficult times of Judas history God chose him though to be his mouthpiece during that 70 year period of Babylon captivity he incorporated prophecies and parables and signs and symbols and visions to describe and dramatize what God's message was to his people. It's kind of like the, the there in the the 37th verse where he, he talks about the dry bones there in the valley and how the bones begin to come alive and begin to snap back together. What a vision. He talks about a, a clay tablet there in Ezekiel chapter 4. God used 
Ezekiel. The Old Testament prophet Ezekiel was, was filled with the Holy Spirit in the beginning of his ministry. He said there in Ezekiel 2.2, 2, Then the Spirit entered me when he spoke to me. You see, the, the, thing, about, the thing about the day of Pentecost and the thing about the Holy Spirit coming, when, when he comes on you, there's a difference. You're not the same as you used to be. There's a difference when the Holy Spirit comes and indwells in your heart and life. Now we know Ezekiel did some unorthodox things and, and probably some, and it called them prophetic acts, but, but, but he did some unorthodox things. And the Holy Spirit was blamed for causing Ezekiel to do those unusual things. Let me ask you something. Would you do some unusual things if God the Holy Spirit spoke to you? If God the Holy Spirit wanted you to do some unusual things? You see, all through the all through the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit's creative and directive and energizing. Remember when when Moses was leading the people? Remember how they complained about the food, not having enough? And how God came and gave them the quail. <laughs> and it was more than they could they could handle. In fact, uh, I just read again a phrase this morning. It was three foot high. Quail everywhere. And, and before they could they could get done eating, it, it had a bad taste for them. <laughs> oh, God blessed them. But but the Spirit of God was on Moses. The Spirit of God, the Scripture says in, in Exodus 35, filled Bezalel, as and he did followings of God. Uh, when you talk about, uh, think about Samson, there in, in Judges, and uh, uh, how God heard and answered prayer, and the Spirit was upon him and led him. The Spirit was on Gideon. Samuel and all those prophets that spoke by him. Every creative period had its gift of the Holy Spirit. And the manifestations are occasional and spiritual. Prophets like Isaiah and Joel foretold the day of the fullness of the Spirit, which would be the crowning gift of the new age. In the New Testament, the Spirit of God is an active agent also in salvation. But in the Gospels, he was not yet given. Our Lord himself was straightened until his baptism was accomplished. And he had sent fire upon the earth there in Luke 12, 49 and 50. And the Spirit was in the world, but not yet given, according to John 7, 39. Jesus was not yet glorified. Well, that's the way it was prior to Pentecost. What was it like at Pentecost? The signs were not new, except in their combination and intensity. The wind and the fire and the tongues had all been associated with the gift of the Spirit, but they were now intensified and enlarged and distributed to a community of believers. There was an overflowing fullness. The Spirit of God in a larger measure with new powers and enlarged opportunities. The gift of God to His Son and the gift of the Son to the world. And He came to fulfill the mission with Christ which came into the world. When I think about Him coming when I think about the Holy Spirit coming, he's referred to as the, the paraclete, the counselor, the advocate, the administrator. His, his ministry is, is redemptive and regenerative. He, he works a work on the inside. The presence is better 
than the bodily presence of Jesus. Jesus had said, it's better for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter, the paralytic, will not come to you. It was better to have the Holy Spirit with us. But why wait to come upon such men as Peter, James, John? You see that a couple, three things, or four things I want you to see. The gift of the Spirit is inseparable from the work of the Son. It's not to say that deity gained a new experience of humanity in Jesus Christ. But by the sufferings of Christ, the throne of God is the throne of grace where mercy and help are found. Have a need today? Need some help? Need some grace? Need some mercy? The throne's available. The, the scriptures were were discreet and quiet until the Holy Spirit came. And the Spirit is the crowning gift of redemption through Jesus. The Spirit was through it all. And as the Son learned and thereby, thereby entered the priesthood of grace, so the Spirit was prepared to be his paraclete in the church and the world. Then he's the, he's the fullness of time. Sent forth his son when the day of Pentecost was close down. They were all together in one place, all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. The utterance. And then the last thing this morning is, how's that Holy Spirit after Pentecost? There was a change of the apostles was was more wonderful than any of the marvelous portents, portents of the day. The wind and the fire passed, but the transformation remained. Hear me this morning, if you hear nothing else, when you're filled with the Spirit, when God the Holy Spirit comes and settles down upon you, there is a transformation. You're not the same as you was before. You, you were transformed when you got saved, when God forgave you of your sins. Yes. But I want to tell you, when he comes and he cleanses you, when he cleanses you from the crown of your head all the way down to the soles of your feet, he takes the old anger out. Amen. He, he, he takes out the, the desire for the smut and, and all that stuff. God the Holy Spirit is not with you now, but he's in, in you now. There's a difference in the God the Holy Spirit being with you and God the Holy Spirit being in you. For when God the Holy Spirit comes and infills you and indwells you, he takes control of your entire life yes. as long as you surrender to him. And he makes you holy and he makes you pure and he, and he, makes, you, he makes you want to live that way for him. It gives you a desire, oh, to be what he would have you to be. Oh, my prayer this morning is, oh, that Pentecostal fires would fall again. You know, that's the, that's the great theme of our church, that we're a holiness church, that we believe in that Pentecostal fire. But my prayer is, oh, God, let us have another wave of it across our church. Oh, might we see our believers sanctified holy we can love each other then we can put up with each other yeah. we we can get along together you know that and that that fire that love that he gives us helps us reach out to all those around about us well that which happened to Pentecost is the biggest thing that ever happened and now the biggest question is has it happened to you? Have you received a Holy Ghost? Do you know that the Holy Spirit indwells, lives, and fills your heart and your life? Do you know that He guides you and directs you every day of your life? Do you know that He's walking with you? You can this morning. There's somebody that knows it. You, you ought to know that this morning. 
and you ought to have him as Lord of your life. Shall we pray? Father, we love you this morning. Lord, we're thankful for Pentecost Sunday. We're thankful, Lord, that we celebrate the birth of the church today. We thank you, Lord, for making it possible for the Holy Spirit not to just walk with us, but to be in us and indwell us. And we pray this morning, oh God, oh, we pray this morning that you will speak to every person here in this drive-in church, every person that hears us over Facebook, every person that hears us through YouTube, every person that might even read something about it. Lord, that they would question themselves and know that if you ask themselves, if you live and reign in their hearts and lives. Lord, this morning, if not so, would you help them to pray the prayer and ask you, Lord, just to come and to fill them to the fullest. And Lord, we'll not fail to give you honor and praise. In your name we ask it. right so we're going to sing the trees of the field and um so as you go go praising 